Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why War of the Sparks will probably be the best-selling Magic the Gathering set in history. A lot of reasons. MTG Arena, I believe, is the most prevalent reason. So if somebody comes to my store with their parents, or their parents come in by themselves, they always reference MTG Arena. Previously, no one has ever referenced Magic Online because Magic Online is really, really competitive. You don't have a ranking system like you do in MTG Arena, which newer players can play new players and they can make new player mistakes. And overall, I don't think Magic Online was a net positive. In fact, I think it was a net negative. MTG Arena is definitely a net positive. There is... Uh, the numbers, it's all about numbers. You look at the War of the Spark trailer with over 5 million views. When's the last time a Magic video had over 5 million views and it was not uploaded by a Pewee, Dewey, Pie type of figure? The Planeswalkers and the Loyal Companions. So not only are the Planeswalkers interesting and uncommon, the cards that go with the Planeswalkers are also collectible for them. So let's go back to... Pretend that you're a brand new casual magic player. Yeah, you're going to want a legendary creature hound with vigilance trample and that can send more plus one plus one counters on it. And then you're going to want his companion, which actually curves from three mana to four mana. This is a very simple card for you to understand uh, and play magic with. So these cards are designed specifically for MTG Arena. Again, I said many times, uh, people wail on mobile games when they want a certain character. So mobile games is very character-based. Fate Grand Order, Pokemon Go with the shiny characters, and even you know like Fire Emblem. It's all about characters, and not it's not the character is necessarily very very good. It's the fact that people. Hey, there's 36 Planeswalkers. I, there's probably one of them that you actually like, maybe multiples, and you want to collect them and play them, and then they talk to you in the game. The talking to you in the game is very important. Voice actors and actresses is probably one of the most important things for a video game or for a mobile game because that's what you're paying all that money to get, right? Is the low sprite, in this case the card, as well as having the card interact. And that was very smart that every single Planeswalker card will, you know, talk to you when they get hit, when they grow up, you know, when they get discarded, all types of effects that happen to them. And that's cool. Uh, I think that's very smart. And now everyone will get that because you have 36 on, you have 36 Planeswalkers, one per booster pack. It's very unlikely that a new player wouldn't instantaneously get a Planeswalker given what they look like. Now, the Planeswalkers, like a Rogue Shadow Maids, uh, beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player has one or fewer cards, it deals two damage, minus one. This, these are not particularly strong, but they're very niche. By being niche, I mean some deck will want them. Um, possibly an ED8 deck of some type, even if it's not today, it's later down the road. This will be one of the best expected value sets for some time. Planeswalkers will always, eventually, maybe they slip to a quarter or 50 cents just because of the massive amount of them initially, but they'll always be at least a buck, um, a buck or more, even if they're uncommon, I believe, given the time. And as a speculation, because they are so niche, maybe they become good. You never know. Whenever you have a repeatable effect that you're not putting mana into every turn, but you can get that repeatable effect every turn, that's very good. That is very, very good. And again, they each have their collectible card. So when you talk about mobile game and the casual players, they're not so worried about card power level because A, they cannot, uh, they, they don't assess it properly. And B, they just want to play casually at kitchen table. So these Planeswalkers will absolutely be played at the kitchen table. They will absolutely be played in MT MTG Arena. They have done a good job. This will be the best set in the history of Magic in terms of sales, in terms of expected value, I believe. Uh, 
Boxes, I'm less certain of. It depends on print run. Boxes are always kind of... Return to Ravnica was an amazing set, but the print run was so high that you can still buy boxes for $80, $85, $90 a box right now. Uh, So that was a very good set, but yeah, it just got butchered by the print run. Now, I think the overall cards are very good. Like I said many times, the uncommons is where I look at. Uncommons are... (laughs) I mean, if the set has a really good common, that's obviously something very good for expected value. It's very likely that you're going to get a bunch of uncommons, you're going to get a bunch of foil uncommons, and when they have additional value, like Fatal Push did, the whole set's expected value. When you open a box, it becomes more feasible, because to break even, a Fatal Push being a $9 or $10 at one time, that's a cost of free pack. So all you had to do is open one on common and you paid for your entire draft. So, and this, I feel this way about this current set as well. But instead of one fatal push, we have a bunch of planeswalkers and planeswalker friends, if you will. Uh, I also love foil planeswalkers. I think the multiplier on a foil uncommon planeswalker will be very, very high, even if that planeswalker does not see play just because of ED8s. When you look at the foil multipliers of Fatal Push, it's not going to be Fatal Push level, but it'll be close. So I like foil planeswalkers. I like foil uncommon planeswalkers. Let me put it that way. I think they're going to be very easy to obtain. I think they're going to be easy to collect. And we have, we're have we going back into a Golden Age, and it's mainly, largely due to MTG Arena. MTG Arena, I played it a bunch. I have two basically full, fully built decks. Uh, is it, I don't call it Is It Drakes because there's no Drakes in it, but it's really fun. And you can get games, you don't need to wait that long. I think Magic Online, the problem I have with Magic Online is you're always waiting. And so you're paying money to wait. And then occasionally you get to play a game. What a person like chats like not having the chat feature, I think, is very smart because uh, it limits it focuses them on just playing the game instead of making funny Reddit threads, right, and memes. Magic MTG Arena is the real deal. I played a lot of mobile games, and I knew that they needed to do something here to have like a collectability element on the Planeswalker side, because that's what every mobile game is. It's Not only do you win and do you get that special mythic invitation, it's also the fact that there's stuff that you want to collect. So if you're not in, you're not a competitive player, you can still want to do well so you can collect the planeswalkers that you like. And it's not easy to collect them. I mean, you need four of them and you need their companions, which sometimes are uncommons. Sometimes I think they're even rares in this set if it's mythic right if the planeswalker is mythic but something like kyla bane of the dead people like that and then now she has a ghost form which people like as well samut it's just very unlikely that there's not one of these dudes one of the 36 dudes that you don't want to collect and from a casual player standpoint it's all about collectability that's how you get people to spend money you get people to spend money as a avid mobile game fan and i played lots and lots of mobile games um you get people to spend money when they you get people to spend money when they want a certain collector's item or the whole uh sleeves and images i'm not a big fan of that i think that could be redone it's well the reason i'm not a big fan of it is it kind of makes me a little dizzy and I don't want my opponent to, like, use it all the time. Like, I feel like I should be able to turn it off on my side. Um, if I don't want my opponent to use it, um, I think I should not have to see it. And the other part is that it's expensive. So that's my big criticism. It's so expensive. I can get, like, a Planeswalker having that image. I, I can get that. But, like, why does, like, a card that no one plays need, like, a moving image it doesn't make any sense to me anyway what i'm here to tell you is if you have any money you have to save it um you have to save the money for this set 
this is one of those times where I think you can open. I, I, I've identified correctly those times. Conspiracy Take the Crown. You guys can watch old videos. I've been, I was opening that at $78 or even $68 a box. And yes, that's the box that Rudy says is over 200 And I have many, many of those boxes because I realized that, hey, the cards in this box at 68 and even at 78 are worth more money open than they are in the box. So why not just open a ton of boxes? And this will be eventually the same scenario here. Uh, the reason it will be the same scenario is because of the uncommon planeswalkers that will come in foils. There will be so much value in this box that even at $90 Amazon or even at $80 should it go to RTR levels, you can just crack a box open and you can actually net, net quote, net a profit. And uh, when I mean net a profit, I mean that retail prices you didn't get slaughtered, right? So I like this. I have uh, put in a large order of these boxes and I don't know if I want to sell them. Um, so I'm thinking about it. I put in a order of uh, 36 times 6. So it's 6 cases of 6 cases. Whatever that is. What's 36 times 6? Like 200 something? So I have, a, I have an order of 200 is of these boxes. I might sell some just to recuperate cash flow. But the rest of it I'm going to keep. I don't like sealed boxes. And I don't like people who are always promoting sealed boxes. I think you were, have been absolutely slaughtered. I mean, maybe there's a few sealed boxes that will go up in price and sometime Dominaria is a good one example because of all the legendary uncommons and the ability to get foil uncommons as well. I don't know. I'm, I'm all in on this box. Um, I don't actually like Modern Horizons. A lot of people have asked me about that. It's kind of like... It's meant to me, like, I, A, it's a higher price point, which I don't like. And B, it's a lot harder to tell what the eventual value of that will be because it's modern specific. Here, it just looks like a giant EDH set to me. And I know that EDH is where the majority of people make money in terms of speculation. Uh, one of my favorite things to do right now that I'm buying a lot of are the gods. Um, the gods from Journey to Nyx, Pharos, and the other one. They're very, very good because it's been old enough. I never expected them to go up in value. Like, I'm, I'm going to be point blank. I expected maybe a few ones, the red one, the, the good ones to be okay. But even the really bad ones are like 4 or $5. Like Heliod is like 4 or 5 bucks, uh, slowly trending up. Because people like that type of stuff. People like the Planeswalkers. They like the god theme which is similar to a planeswalker theme if you really take a look at it uh these are the promos uh liliana's triumph is a particularly strong one i think overall um that this promo with this artwork will be very valuable uh, liliana's triumph if you can trade into them trade into them um they're going to be some of the best cards um that you can get so basically what i'm saying is if you had to save money, save money today, and then buy this set tomorrow. Um, nothing in current standard is worth this much. I don't think Modern Horizons will get lots of hype, but I think long term, this will be a better set expected value for what you put into it. The problem I have with Modern Horizons is the packs are more expensive, so you have to consider that when you buy something. Yeah, these cards are amazing. Even the Kiara, I think, is pretty good. The untapped target and permanent, that's really good. Uh, and then see how it's so easy to play her. And whenever it has power four or greater, you draw a card. So they're basically, um, the uncommons are basically enchantments with uh, upside. But the upside, unlike, uh, you don't have to spend mana on it, which is really, really important. So if you guys uh, would do me a favor, I would really much enjoy it if you could subscribe to this other channel or give it a view, give it a like. Um, we're running low on sponsorship, so we have to uh, sponsor. The other channel has to sponsor this channel. And, you know, we make some magic videos. We'll get some uh, vlog-like videos up very soon. Actually, two weeks from now, we have it scheduled. So anyway, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite card was and are you excited for the new set? Hi guys.